I'm Brian Olatunji, and I'm a drag racer. My name is Juan Carlos Blum, and I'm a race car driver. My name is Jonathan Castro. I'm a professional drifter. I started with nothing. I didn't even have a screwdriver. This is not easy, but I have to keep going. I understand the risk, but I never give up. I want to win for me and for my country. This is not just a passion. This is who I am. It's my dream. It is my dream to become a champion. To be a champion. Hi there, I'm Brian Tong, and welcome to the first episode of Dreams to Champions. In every sport, young upstarts take on the veterans for the glory, the pride, and the money that comes with winning. But in motorsports, it can be especially hard to overthrow the giants who rule like royal dynasties. There's the king, Richard Petty, a NASCAR powerhouse for 35 years. There's drag racer John Force, with three daughters and a son-in-law who went into the family business. And there's Mario Andretti, need I say more? So for the challengers, what does it take to get to victory lane? Over the next 10 weeks, we'll answer that question as we tell the stories of a diverse group of aspiring racers. Among them, Juan Carlos Bloom, a babyface stock car driver from Mexico. Brian Olatunji, a mechanical engineer from Detroit who drag races with high octane ambition. And Jonathan Castro, a young Dominican making a name for himself in a sport called drifting. Jonathan Castro says he has what it takes, the courage, confidence, and commitment. And he knows the obstacles. I'm a rookie. It's kind of really hard because everything was completely new. If you make a mistake, you're done. As a professional sport, drifting is relatively new. It's judged more on style than speed. You go one-on-one -on -one against another driver, and you win or lose in the turns, where the three judges are looking for a showy display. It's man over machine. That's what is drift all about, going crazy. That's why I love it. You want to do something, just do it. That's, for me, the best thing in the world. Jonathan Castro is 28 years old from the Dominican Republic. This is where he grew up. The capital, Santo Domingo, a Caribbean metropolis founded by Christopher Columbus's brother in 1496. We're coming from a poor country. We don't have the resource to get in there and poor ourselves. In 2005, having saved $5,000 from his job as a salesman, Castro modified his personal car for drifting, despite his father's concerns. I didn't like it, that's true, because it's dangerous. I said, this is what I'm gonna do, no matter you like it or not. This is my dream. And just a few years later, Castro won the first of three national titles. Everyone says that I'm a guy, don't, don't give up. I don't, it doesn't matter, it is a, uh, I have to jump from the roof. You have to jump. Hey, man, woo -hoo. I jump it. And then I find out how I'm going to land. Now, Castro is the first Dominican to compete in Formula Drift, the U.S. competition known as Formula D. It's seven events that run the gamut, from city streets to rolling hills to tight ovals banked at 30 degrees. I think it makes for um, either rookie drivers or new drivers like Jonathan that's coming into the series, having to adapt to that has been one of the big hurdles. For his American competition, Castro has rented a 350Z, owned by Los Angeles tire dealer, John Shin. You're making the car look good. Yeah. I appreciate that. As a baseline driver, he's pretty good. But I knew going into this that this would be uh, very much a driver development program. For the season, Castro pays $75,000 for the car, mechanics Justin Wu and Joe Vick. Shin manages the crew and serves as unofficial coach. 
Yeah, around the horseshoe, it was looking good. And then you hit the clipping point. I want you to bring it just a little bit wider before you hit that. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, you can set it up just a little bit wider and it'll give you a, a, a faster way through the horseshoe. I have to read him to see what kind of emotions he's letting out. It's okay to be upset. He's gonna get nervous. And he's got a lot more pressure on him here than he did back in the Dominican. You can do it. We all know you can do it. Yeah, yeah. Castro admits watching Formula D back home on YouTube is one thing, being here is quite another. I was seeing Formula D always on TV. And I see all this driver next to me, it's like a boom, boom. Like a boom, wow, this is this driver's. And boom, I'm inside. Oh, this is, I'm in the middle of everything. Castro envisions his team as one where everyone can speak their mind, regardless of the pecking order. I want everyone to be in the same level because we're a team and we need to be, we have to be in the same level. The kumbaya sounds good in theory, but in reality, Castro and his team are heading for a profanity-laced confrontation. We can't just go out there half-assed. This is not grassroots anymore. If anything's different on the car, you need to let us know. Next week, can this dysfunctional family get it together? Call them and tell them this is not working. This is 45, 55, 35, and whatever, but it's not working. What the hell? And after the break, can this teenager from Mexico handle the turns in Toledo? Get ready. Green, green, green. Welcome back to Dreams to Champions. The American patriot Benjamin Franklin said energy and persistence conquer all things. Well, the guy was smart enough to make it onto the $100 bill, but was he right about energy and persistence? Does hot enthusiasm beat stone cold experience? That's the question facing a young stock car driver from Mexico, Juan Carlos Bloom, who dreams of a championship in NASCAR's biggest show. His first love was music, starting at age four. It was peaceful. It made me feel calm. But at age nine, Juan Carlos Bloom saw his first stock car race, and he was smitten. What hit me was the speed. It gave me a rush. From that point on, I fantasize about racing cars. Today, barely 18 years old, he has such a passion for racing that even his girlfriend Mejo sings about it. Already making a name for himself in Mexico, Juan Carlos Bloom dreams of being a champion. Listo. Listo. Not only in Mexico, but also in the most competitive stock car races in the world. My goal is win the championship in NASCAR Spring Cup. Juan Carlos, he goes by JC, is the son of privilege. His family owns Oleo Finos, manufacturing cooking oil and soap. With the support of an uncle who sponsored racing teams in Mexico, JC started on go-karts when he was 11. Within a couple of years, he won the first of two regional championships. It's a great feeling. You feel the glory. And every victory was taking me closer to my dream. His competitive spirit set him apart from other teenagers. I gave up parties and going out with my friends because I wanted to be in shape. Physically and mentally. By 2010, Juan Carlos was racing mini stocks and he finished second in the Mexican championship. Racing is it. That's my passion. 
his impressive string of trophies caught the eye of Armando Fitz, a Cuban-American businessman who has owned several racing teams over the last 12 years. It's about 30 miles an hour difference, so you got to pay attention. This season, Armando brought Juan Carlos to the Toledo Speedway, JC's first ARCA race. I didn't have any reason to be nervous. All right, amen. I thought I could do well. It's not a complicated track. This would arguably be the most important race in his young career, and it would begin to answer the question, can enthusiasm beat experience? It's an emotional moment because I'm about to race. Get ready. Get ready. It's go time. Green, green, green. the Toledo Speedway, where Juan Carlos Bloom will soon drive his first ARCA race. It's my first time in this kind of cars and this kind of, of track category. It's different, but I think good. I feel good. Back home, Juan Carlos Bloom has done well driving mini stocks, and he races in NASCAR Mexico. Here in Toledo, he set a high goal with ARCA. I want to uh, be the rookie of the year. Is this kid confident? It's tight, you see. Or is he overconfident? Yes. You want these down here? Yes. Okay. Please. Did you uh, get started on go-karts? Yeah, I started on go-karts. Yeah, Veteran James Hilton says today's rookies have every reason to believe in themselves. These young guys go so fast, so quick. Hard me even see him. <laughs> but Milka Duno, the Venezuelan model turned racer, warns against pushing too hard, too fast. It's really important. Sometimes you can get frustrating here in this kind of race because it's so many cars, but we have just to be patient to, to wait for the moment. You know? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Juan Carlos's mentor is Armando Fitz, a Cuban American businessman who has owned racing teams. He believes the young driver can handle the pressure with confidence and humility. Juan Carlos will drive a Dodge Charger owned by Carl Long. Long himself has 49 career wins over nearly three decades in the cockpit. After you get used to it, you forget about the speed. Now it's just how far you can drive in there. Today, for Juan Carlos, Carl Long will be the guru who pumps him up and calms him down. During the race, I'm going up the spot. I'm going to be talking to JC the whole time. I hope he can understand Redneck. <laughs> Crew Chief Dave Goulet also has years of experience. I believe JC is a phenomenal race car driver. I think he's going to get after it. But on this morning, set aside for practice, Juan Carlos may not get enough seat time on a track he has yet to drive. We're a new team, we got here late, so we were at the end of everything. So we are at the end of tech line, end of everything else. So while we're just pushing through doing the normal technical inspection, first practice is already over. We'll just hope that JC's a quick study. He seems to be the single practice run and two qualifying runs go well. The car is fine and you now uh, the track, I feel fine and feel fast. I think it's going to be a, a good week. When I take the banking, yeah. Yeah, this sensation is amazing. <laughs> Tomorrow, out of 35 drivers, Juan Carlos will start 30 back from the pole. Now everybody else is going to slow up and we're going to make you go faster. All right. What they do not suspect is that Milka Duno from Venezuela will literally collide with JC's chance to go the distance. We 
in the crash, guys. We're in the crash. We'll show you how this rookie's luck runs out next week. But after the break... This is it. This is where I grew up, right here. From child's play to adults only, we'll get acquainted with Brian O. Already look like I'm ready to go fast, huh? A natural born winner with a drag racing dream. Every day I wake up, I work my ass off because I want to win, period. Welcome back to Dreams to Champions. Some people are born great. Others have greatness thrust upon them. And then there's a third group of high rollers who get where they get by kicking butt. Meet Brian Olatunji, a full force of nature who's literally dragging himself into the fast lane. I dream about winning. That's it. I dream about winning. Every day I wake up, I work my ass off because I want to win, period. I don't give a about nothing else besides winning. Brian Olatunji is from what you might call the wrong side of Detroit. This is it. This is where I grew up, right here. A place where the journey from birth to earth could be a short one and where a trip to the big house usually doesn't mean the governor's mansion. Oh, what's good? Lano, man. Yeah, Lane home. Yeah. Dude, how you been? All right, man, trying to survive, man. But the mean streets of the D also produce success stories. Brian up. And with the help of a supportive family and an iron will, Brian is determined to become one of them. Hello. Well, hello there. You don't even recognize me. It's been too long. I'm Linda's son. Yeah, they used to live next to Mr. Hill. What's your name? Brian. The youngest boy. Yeah, yeah. How are you? <laughs> I was born and raised on the east side of Detroit. Single parent household. My mother's a wonderful woman. Uh, between her and the man above, and obviously my family, I've got a very strong family. Uh, that's what got myself and my sisters to this point. I never had a relationship with my father. In fact, I've never met my father. Uh, however, you know, that's not something that defines who you are. And so, uh, you know, it's up to me to continue to tread my own path. Brian's path was in fact a two-lane highway. With his mom at his shoulder, he was forced to hit the books, paving the way to a degree in mechanical engineering. The other lane was paved with burnt rubber as motorsports are in his blood. Drag race has always been there. I was born and raised basically at the drag strip. My grandparents, John Broaden, and Marguerite Broaden. They started at Detroit Dragway back in 1971. My grandfather was the first African-American manager in drag racing. So I grew up at Detroit Dragway. I was there every weekend as a child. I, you know, subsequently I took kind of the road less traveled, so to speak, because I'm a first generation driver. My son, the youngest of my three, he just fell in love with racing. And he just raced everything he ever had and practice racing. I raced my bike, I raced in the bathtub. I had a little plastic red helmet that I used to, that I used to put on and I'd get the water hot so it'd have smoke coming off of it to make it seem like I was doing a burnout, like I was in a funny car. We were at the track and Brian probably maybe was four. I looked up and he was helping another racer push a race car and you could barely see him. <laughs> But as he grew, Brian would be seen. With enough game to earn both a golf and a basketball scholarship, he instead decided mom knows best and took the academic route, though still with an eye on racing. So far, mom's game plan is working out. An ordained minister, she gives all the credit to a higher power. I pushed education. I told them that they could stay home as long as they were working on their future, but education was the key to open doors for them. It was hard on them, you know, but it kept them off the streets and, and the children I have today, I'm just, I just give God all the praise, the honor and the glory and all of the accomplishments that they've made. You know, I got a good grade of hair only because my mom poured a lot of oil in it back in the day, praying over me. <laughs> it's not been an easy road to get to this point, but this is the road that God has taken them to. And people have asked me, are you afraid of him racing? I said, no. 
My mom has been around long enough. She's seen enough. And besides, she knows her son. This is a, this is a brand new latest and greatest from Hans. This thing is pretty doggone sweet. Oh yeah, she fits well. Look at that. Already look like I'm ready to go fast, huh? Nice. This is what I love to do. And uh, she knows that I, I take on those risks. But ultimately, she knows in order to win, you gotta, you gotta drive it right up to that edge. Fearlessness must be a family trait. In the high stakes world of drag racing, you go hard or go home. Ian, what's happening, man? Pretty good, man. I know you sent over some files for our latest and greatest hero car, right? Yeah, you should have gotten them. I uh, added the logos and stuff that you asked. Sweet. My days typically start at 6 a.m. I work out six days a week. Uh, I go into the office till about 5 p.m. You know, I'm constantly cutting away to go handle business, whether it's checking on parts or is working on the next sponsorship proposal. I'm working on that whole work-life balance bit, but racing is 24-7, man. The reality is that you really can't turn it off. Of course, ambitious thrill seekers are a dime a dozen. We'll be following Brian O's single-minded approach and show you what fuels his dreams. And on Dreams to Champions next week, Juan Carlos Bloom, from Mexico to his first ARCA race. We're in the crash, guys. What happens after the crash? Are we that bad? No, oh, we're pretty bad. And Jonathan Castro. The, the car's just starting off by itself. The struggle at his U.S. drifting debut. So pissed off.